Well, today we're going to talk about difficult counting problems uh, by some kind of brute force method. And it's actually, uh, to be precise, it's the solution to counting problems uh, when the order is not important and identical items ex exist. Now, uh, you remember that we used to solve this using individual cases. So the idea is you have three blue balls over here and two green and one yellow. How many ways can we select any four balls from this collection of balls? So remember the old style, we use cases. Um, and uh, this is a, kind of a simple problem in the sense that the number of balls aren't that many. There's only three blue, two green, and one yellow. Um, but this solution is scalable to objects of greater number and variety. So let's just lay out um, the different kinds of balls. Um, we'll symbolize each blue ball with a B, each green ball with a G, and the yellow ball with a Y. Um, the strategy here is that um, uh, well, we're going to use polynomials and um, polynomials are uh, intended to be merely symbolic. Uh, X doesn't do anything in these polynomials um, so we're not really concerned about X but uh, we're going to make use of the exponents and the coefficients of those polynomials. So the exponents and coefficients are going to convey information to us that's important. The exponents will symbolize the number of objects chosen and the coefficients, that's the numbers in front of each term, are the number of ways to choose that many objects. So in this problem, uh, as you can probably see admittedly, the number of objects is small and the number of uh, and other methods such as using cases might actually be shorter than the one I'm about to describe. It's actually uh, the kind of method I'm about to describe is actually quite long but uh, this brute force solution while it may seem a bit more cumbersome um, it is in fact scalable to any problem of any number of items and any variety of items. So the advantage of doing it uh, to a small set in this video is that it makes it easy uh, to check my answer against other styles of solving, the, solving these problems which have been previously learned. So uh, the number of ways to choose a blue balls would be 0 for no balls, 1, 2, or I can also choose all three balls. Similarly for green balls I can choose none or I can choose one or two of those balls. And for the yellow I have two ways of choosing yellow balls. I either don't or I choose the only ball in that collection. And um, as you're going to see here I'm going to express each case as a polynomial. Okay, so each case can be represented as a polynomial. Now remember the polynomial is only symbolic. It's not, uh, we are not going to find zeros of a polynomial. We're not going to find uh, x in the polynomial. Uh, we are only going to make use of the exponents and the coefficients. So for the blue, uh, to represent no balls chosen, we'll say x to the zero. For one ball chosen, that's x to the one. And uh, x squared will be two balls chosen, and x cubed will be three balls chosen. And we'll show that they're added together. So this is basically the total number of ways to choose each ball, uh, if you wish to look at the uh, corresponding uh, coefficient. Now, for green, uh, we have x to the 0, x to the 1, and x squared. And for y1, it's x to the 0 and x to the 1. Uh, the x squared there is actually an error. We're going to have to erase that one, uh, get rid of it somehow. But uh, we are going to now multiply um, the polynomial representing the choices for blue, the polynomial representing the choices for green, and the one representing the choices for yellow. Um, altogether to get a larger polynomial. That larger polynomial will represent the number of ways we can choose items um, of any number um, from all three subsets, from the blues, the greens, and the yellows, all taken as a total. So we'll just show you um, this polynomial, um, at least show it in factored form, 
and we are going to at some point have to expand um, all of these terms. Now you, you can probably appreciate x to the 0 is kind of redundant. We can just make that a 1. Okay, so And x to the 1 is kind of redundant too, so we'll make that x. The rest of them though we'll write down, we'll write them down as we see them. So for the first term we'll just write the binomial part down, the one for yellow. That's 1 plus x. The uh, options for green will say 1 plus x plus x squared. For the blue 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. Right. Now we're going to expand the first two uh, first. So for the next step we're just going to do one expansion at a time and uh, then gather like terms and then move on for the next expansion. So, um, so we're going to multiply 1 plus x it's like saying 1 plus 1 times x, one way to choose one yellow ball from the set of yellow balls. And um, we're going to multiply 1 plus x by the trinomial 1 plus x plus x squared. And then uh, we'll move on. So we expand the first two factors using the FOIL method, uh, except that we're doing it across a binomial and a trinomial. And this is what we get. Uh, we get 1 plus x squared plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. And, uh, of course, we need now to gather our like terms. So that first long um, factor comes from multiplying the first two factors of the previous step. And the second factor is simply a copy of the second factor from the previous step. It's just copied down. So let's just gather like terms. We have 1 plus, looks like we have 2x's here for 2x. We have 2x squared as well. So that gives us 2x squared. And we have 1x cubed term. Okay, that takes care of the first factor. And then we copy down the second factor again. And next we expand once again using um, some form of the FOIL method. And this is what we get. We get this rather lengthy polynomial with a bunch of terms in it. Well, that polynomial hasn't been simplified yet. We need to gather our like terms, make sure it's as simple, it's put in as simple terms as possible because um, it's not very useful the way it is. So we gather our x's. So 1x plus 2x is 3x. Then we gather our x squareds. Let's see, there's 2 there, 2 there, and 1 at the beginning. So that's 5x squared. And for the x cubes, there's 1 there, 2 and 2, and 1 more makes 6. 6x six cubed. And 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5. And that makes... Um, it makes 5x to the 4th, and then there's 3x to the 5th, and finally x to the 6th. There's only 1x to the 6th term in existence. What have we got? Well, what we've got is a polynomial which has the complete solution. It contains in it, in it the information for a complete solution to any possible question from this problem of 3, 2, and 1 balls uh, to choose from. Well, okay, the 1 just represents the choice of no balls at all. There's only one way to choose nothing. The 3x, well, the x is to the power 1, uh, which the x to the power 1 represents the number of ways to choose one ball. How many are there? Well, you read the coefficient, and that's 3. three ways of choosing one ball. Either you just choose a blue, a green, or just a yellow. As for two balls, well, there's five ways of choosing two balls, six ways of choosing three balls, and let's see, what was the, what did the question originally ask? How many ways can we select four balls? That's part A of the question. So the very next term uh, tells us the number of ways to select four balls is five. Now, can we check this answer? Is there a way that we can just, you know, rather than 
believing in this magical math can can we find a way of of checking against the answer well if there's only five ways uh to write to um choose four balls from the set that we're given then it would be suitable to just write the sample space of all the ways we can choose four balls so since there's only five then the sample space ought to be easy to write out so let's just let's just write them out let's see b b b so we can choose three blues and one of the others let's say green then three blues and say yellow okay that's two of them so far hmm let's choose two blues how about blue blue green green okay blue blue green green how about blue blue green yellow okay that's four we need one more way well let's let's do one blue so one blue and then green green yellow and that's it all five ways are all outlined right there in front of you now of course if you see any others let me know but uh, I don't think you'll find too many more <laughs> okay so um, that answers the first question and certainly laying out the sample space is a great check you can actually check against all the possibilities that you could possibly think of and if all you can come up with is five and five happens to be the coefficient well, that's a good indication that you got the right answer of course then you can also answer using cases as uh, done in data management but because the sample size is so small uh, we are um, we're content with simply writing out the sample space the second question said how many ways can you choose at least three balls of any color well there's six ways of choosing three balls five ways of choosing four three ways of choosing five and one way of choosing six right so at least three balls includes the choice of three balls it also in includes the choice of any greater number of balls so uh, since the maximum number of balls is six then we can only choose a maximum of six balls and so six plus five is eleven and three is fourteen and one is fifteen and uh, of course we can uh, write out the sample space for that as well okay so that that's 15 and um, now the um, as you can see here this this actually handily hands us all the answers for all the different ways of doing it but it took a lot of work to get here you had to expand a large polynomial into even larger polynomials then clean up the mess by gathering up all the like terms but once you had it at the end it was very rewarding because we can actually answer any question we like like how about how about the number of ways you can choose fewer than three balls now fewer than three balls does not include three so that would mean that we'd have to add only the first three terms like x to the zero term x to the one term and x to the squared term so if we add those coefficients it's one plus three plus five there are nine ways of choosing fewer than three balls and uh, anyway the 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 solution is rather powerful it's very scalable to any number of objects and uh, i recommend that uh, you maybe take a closer look at it and uh, you know when when life gets more complicated than the question I gave you <laughs>